Hi guys, so last weekend I bought two paperback copies of books that I had already read in ebook format and that I loved so much that I had to get a physical copy. Because for me, if I only have a book in ebook format, I don't feel like I truly own the copy. And to be fair, in the cases in which the book is not from Tor.com publishing and I had to buy it through the Kindle shop, that is only too true. I don't fully own even the digital copy. But anyway, I have now accumulated a small stack of books like that, books that I first read in ebook format and loved and enjoyed so much that I just had to get a physical copy and I thought I'd show them to you here because that gives me an excuse to talk about them again and to recommend them again. And I'd like to begin with the Green Hollow duology by Emily Tesh, Silver in the Wood and Drowned Country. These are two fantasy novellas based on the folk myth of the green man of the forest, but with a twist that the green man is in fact the viewpoint character in both of these books for a change. The first book does get quite spooky towards the end and has some horror elements even, but it is wonderfully quirky and whimsical throughout. And the second book is one continuous heartbreak, but it ends well. Um, you could read Silver in the Wood as a standalone, but both of these novellas are the story of a chain of events that is set in motion when a young and dedicated and proactive folktale researcher becomes fascinated with a green man and seeks him out in his forest and becomes entangled with the affairs of the spirits of the forest with quite dramatic consequences. Similar in spirit but less whimsical is The Fairy Hounds of York by Arden Powell, which is set in Yorkshire, obviously, and I think in the Victorian period or maybe even the Georgian. I think there's something at the beginning of the book which situates it in time. But anyway, it's the story of a young man who wakes up one morning, morning and finds himself under a fairy curse that is trying to draw him into the fairy realm. He gets help in the form of a wandering man who is an outcast due to his descent and together they try to break the curse. And while doing so, they also have to dodge the infamous fairy hounds whose howling will kill anybody who hears it. It is set in winter and has a lovely, almost tangible, frosty, hawthorny atmosphere to it. Darker yet and dirtier in a deliciously messed up but relatable way is The Monster of Elendhaven by Jennifer Giesbrecht. This is the story of Johann who calls himself Monster because he is a zombie-like creature but also because of perceived personality traits. And he roams the dark streets of Elendhaven, a former industrial town in the far north that was ravaged by an oil spill and a subsequent plague and was abandoned by the people who caused the catastrophe and who could have helped but chose not to, as is always the case. Johann is inexplicably and almost magically drawn to a member of the former aristocracy of the town who has stayed behind and has shut himself in, in his alchemical study and is plotting revenge. Dun, dun, dun. The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kai Ashanti Wilson is the story of two demigods who are hired by a caravan to escort them safely through the infamous Wild Deeps, a sort of oasis where people are wont to vanish or get eaten. They are gods or demigods only in the sense um, following the old adage that any technology that is sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic and thus 
divinity, but they are actually just more scientifically knowledgeable and technologically advanced than the rest of humanity. And why that is and what the two of them are doing there in the desert, acting as mercenaries, I won't spoil here. But if, you li if you'd like to know more about this before you decide if you want to go into this, you can watch my single review video that I made of this back in the day. I think it was my third booktube video altogether. Um, but I just want to say here that this is, this reads like a linguistic firework display and I loved it for that. And Witchmark by C.L. Polk is set in an alternate world which is modeled on Edwardian England just after what for all intents and purposes is World War I. There's a lot of bicycle riding going on which is delightful. <laughs> and in the center of the story is Miles who is a young doctor and an illegal witch in hiding who by chance uncovers the rotten foundations on which his country is built. He gets help from a fairy, there's a romance, it's lovely. And from fantasy to real world contemporary, The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This is a murder mystery slash family drama set on a cattle station in Western Australia. So in one of the most remote places on the planet outside of Antarctica. So in a way, the murder mystery is a locked room mystery, even though there are wide open spaces all around, but there's only a very small number of people who could have been the murderer. It is set at Christmas too, so perfect for the season. And Bitter Legacy by Dal McLean is also a murder mystery, but this one with a very strong romance subplot. It is set in London where the protagonist has just joined the Metropolitan Police and now has to deal with a serial killer. The love story is connected to the murder mystery and is just as stressful as the murder investigation. And it is hellishly complicated, but in a believable way, especially if seen before the background of the solution to it all. But before we get there, the book will break your heart approximately 800 times. And the rest of the books are all by one author, namely Alexis Hall. Boyfriend material. With its awful cover, awful title and the equally awful fake dating trope that is in here. I would never have bought this even in ebook format if I hadn't already been a fan of the author and of his ability to portray emotional rawness and complex and contradictory characters. As it stands, this is still my least favorite of the books of his that I've read. I think there's some unfortunate and very obvious ventriloquizing going on, which on top of that, I strongly disagreed with. <laughs> uh, but apart from that, it is still delightful. And I think, I think it even made me cry. Just even when he's not at his best, Alexis Hall is very, very good. Waiting for the Flood is an absolutely lovely novella. It is set in Oxford during a flood where a librarian and rare book restorer meets a civil engineer who draws him out of the shell that he has been trapped in ever since the disintegration of a long-term relationship that led to a breakdown of his self-image. This is just a short, understated absolute gem. But all in all, I loved Glitterland by Alexis Hall even more. I think it's his most accomplished work, maybe because it's his earliest one, and maybe questions of marketability didn't play a role for him back then. So maybe this has turned out to be the best because of that, sad as it is. So this is Posh famous writer falls in love with wannabe fashion model himbo from Essex 
but is simultaneously too snobbish and too depressed and self-hating to admit his feelings even to himself and to commit to a relationship. It's hilarious, but also so, so heartbreaking. It had me crying my eyes out at two in the morning. I also have Prosperity by Alexis Hall in paperback, but I think I bought this directly in paperback without having read it in ebook format before. This is a steampunk novella set on a skyship and in a mining town in the sky where they are mining this bogus Victorian element Phlogiston. It's a love story or a story about love, but it's much more subtle than your average romance. And the most characteristic thing about it isn't the skyship and the, the, the sky krakens, but actually um, the slang in which it is written, the Victorian street urchin lingo. It's a really, really original book for that, even though the setting is a not generic, but a very well-known, well-trodden steampunk setting. And that's it. There are, of course, quite a lot of books still that I would like to get my hands on a paperback copy of sometime, but they seem to be very hard to get sometimes a paperback copy doesn't even exist, not even as print on demand. And sometimes they are out of print or they are at least hard to get anywhere in Germany. But these are the ones that I was lucky enough to get and I will cherish them forever. Well, that video didn't age well. <laughs> I swear, a day after I filmed the video, I came across another book in an online used bookshop that I had been looking for for almost two years now. It seems to be out of print. And it is the wonderful Whistling in the Dark by Tamara Allen. This is a historical romance set in New York City in the aftermath of the First World War and just weeks before the beginning of the Prohibition. And it is about two young men who are each a bit damaged by recent events. Um, we have the country boy whose dreams of pursuing a career in music have been derailed by a war injury. And now the only way he sees to get out of his repressive environment is to basically flee to New York City with hardly a dollar in his pocket and no idea how to get by in the big city. And we have the city boy Jack who is street savvy but has lost his parents um, due to the Spanish flu and is struggling to keep their business afloat. And they basically both come to each other's rescue. It's an incredibly sweet story and it is so well written. It's so carefully written style-wise. It's just shy of being lyrical, which I think is, I, I mean, I mean that as a good thing because lyrical writing would um, very easily seem purple in the context. But it is definitely written with a lot of attention to style and I love her writing. It's easily available on Kindle even though it seems to be out of print. I think this would be a great read for the holidays too and it's definitely my favorite historical romance that I've read so far. But that is definitely it now, or for now, I should say. Do tell me in the comments if there are any ebooks that you loved so much that you bought a hard copy of them afterwards, or that you are planning to buy a hard copy of. I wish you a nice weekend, guys. Bye.